get ready for a jaw-dropping discovery that's leaving scientists stunned. On the Philippines' largest island, Luzon, archaeologists stumbled upon an incredible secret. A hidden stash of rhino bones, expertly butchered with ancient stone tools, over seven or nine. This game-changing find is rewriting history books and challenging our understanding of how humans first migrated to Southeast Asia. The big question is, who were these early adventurers, and how did they bravely cross the vast ocean to reach this island paradise? Let's dive into this epic tale of exploration and uncover the secrets of Luzon's ancient inhabitants. Buckle up, because this discovery is about to blow your mind. You might think it's just another ancient find, but trust us, it's not. The Philippines wasn't supposed to be home to humans over 700,000 years ago. That's a staggering six times older than the previous record. We thought our ancestors only arrived on those islands a relatively recent 67,000 years ago, but it turns out we've been wrong all along. A jaw-dropping stash of rhino bones, with unmistakable signs of being butchered by ancient stone tools, has rewritten the history books and sent shockwaves through the scientific community. The incredible find includes a nearly complete rhino skeleton, with 75% still intact, revealing the secrets of what early humans ate, how they lived, and how they managed to conquer the vast seas surrounding Southeast Asia. But here's where it gets really cool. The skeleton was nestled in ancient mud that had been buried deep within a long dried river bod, like a hidden treasure waiting to be uncovered. Initially, the find seemed like just another piece of history, but little did our scientists know, this was about to become one of the biggest archaeological revelations ever. To pinpoint the exact age of these incredible fossils, researchers took multiple samples from different layers. They analyzed the rhino's tooth enamel and even the quartz grains stuck in the sediment above and below the bones. And when the results came in, we were blown away the bottom layer was an astonishing 727,000 years old. The rhino's tooth was 7 to 9,000 years young and the top layer was a relatively recent 701,000 years old. This changed everything. Now, you might be wondering how scientists could get such accurate readings. Well, they used a super precise method called electron spin resonance, or ESR for short. This technique measures the tiny buildup of electrons in materials as they soak up radiation over time. When dating results go against what we thought we knew, it can spark some heated debates, but this time around, experts from all over came together to confirm that our timeline just got a major upgrade. Alistair Pike, a top-notch archaeological dating expert from the University of Southampton in the UK, even gave his seal of approval. They've nailed it, he said. So who were these ancient folks bold enough to hunt massive beasts like rhinos 700,000 years ago? Fast forward to the 1950s, researchers were scratching the surface of Luzon's ancient secrets when they stumbled upon stone tools and fossilized animal bones, hinting that early humans might have called this place home. But they hit a roadblock they just couldn't pinpoint when these discoveries actually happened within the Middle Pleistocene era, which spans an epic 655,000 years. That was until recent digs in Luzon's Kalinga province blew the lid off with an astonishing haul of 57 stone tools and over 400 animal bones, featuring monitor lizards, deer turtles, and even prehistoric stegodons, their distant relatives to mammoths and elephants. And then came the rhino revelation that put everything into perspective. But here's the twist, these ancient humans weren't Homo sapiens, who didn't evolve in Africa until much later. The leading theory is they were actually Homo erectus, our super ancient human relatives who made the bold move out of Africa nearly two million years ago. But wait, there's more. Bones of Homo erectus found in China and Java around the same time as our Luzon rhino are another strong clue pointing to these ancient humans as the culprits. Yet, Dr. Thomas Injico isn't ready to put on a case closed hat just yet. No human remains have been found at the site, so it's still possible that Homo floresiensis, the infamous hobbit, could have swung into action with their tiny but fierce blades. This mysterious species was discovered 3,000 kilometers south in Indonesia, where they lived from 60,000 to 100,000 years ago. Their super small stature and unique features were likely shaped by isolation on floors. Talk about a David vs. Goliath story. Fast forward to 2016, two groundbreaking studies published in Nature dropped some jaw-dropping news. A partial lower jaw and six teeth of at least one adult and two mini-me kids dated back an astonishing 700s. These fossils revealed an incredible twist, regular-sized humans rapidly shrinking down to just over three feet tall. Scientists theorized that the floors hobbits could be a dwarfed offshoot of early Homo erectus who got stuck on the island. Could our Luzon rhino butchers have been part of this tiny tribe's family tree? Not so fast. As for now, there's no direct link between the two. We'll need more evidence, like finding human remains in Luzon, to solve this mystery once and for all. But here's where it gets even more thrilling. Southeast Asia was a hotbed of human evolution, with several unknown species emerging around the same time. 
As the lead Palo archaeologist puts it, in theory, you could have something special on every single island. That's mind-blowing. So, let's dive into another mind-bending question. How did ancient humans even reach Luzon in the first place? I mean, back then, this island was surrounded by deep waters, just like today. Now, the most obvious answer would be that they traveled by boat. But hold up. We're talking about humans who were still far from building advanced watercrafts to conquer long ocean journeys. So, what's the real story behind their arrival on this tiny island? Now, paleoanthropologist Susan Anton from New York University is shaking things up. She thinks ancient humans were way more clever than we give them credit for. Anton's been studying Homo erectus for a long time and believes they're pretty ingenious. You know what's even crazier? Recent research shows that people living in the Stone Age were likely using boats in the Mediterranean Sea over 130,000 years ago. Talk about ancient sailors. This new info is making us question our accepted history. Are we wrong to assume that people back then couldn't handle long ocean journeys? Anton herself isn't convinced that ancient humans deliberately crossed those vast Southeast Asian seas all those years ago. Susan Anton's got an even wilder theory. She thinks ancient humans might have been swept to those distant islands on tsunami waves, or even hitched a ride on floating landmasses and debris during massive storms. It sounds far out, but as more evidence of Homo erectus turning up in super distant shelters pops up, we might have to admit they had some control over it. And get this, the discovery of that rhino skeleton is a game changer, it's rewriting the history books for this site in the Philippines by multiplying early human presence by 10. But here's where it gets even more fascinating. This rhino skeleton tells us that an island like Luzon in the Philippines wasn't as isolated back in the day, because early humans made their way there during the Middle Pleistocene era. And what's really cool is that it probably wasn't Homo sapiens we're talking about, but another hominin species entirely. Now let's talk tools. The butchery marks on these rhino bones show us that our ancient ancestors were masters of crafting and using them to take down their prey for a full meal deal. And guess what? They weren't alone in this skill. Two other sites have similar evidence of butchery, one in China's Chikushin and the other in Indonesia's Nengabung, Java. Now that we've dived into this incredible find, it's clear we still have so much to uncover about how those early Middle Pleistocene hominins lived in Southeast Asia. This discovery in the Philippines is a major game changer and makes you wonder, might it be time for scientists to re-examine our understanding of human evolution? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. We're eager to hear what you think. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you want more mind-blowing discoveries like this one, make sure to press that notification bell to stay tuned in.